In this video, we're going to learn how to find the vertex and the axis of symmetry after completing the square. Now, in the previous video, we learned how to complete the square, and we came up with equations very similar to the one you can see here. In fact, let's write some of those equations down. In one of the questions, we came up with the equation y equals 3x plus 2 squared minus 27. And there was another question where we had y equals minus x minus 5 squared plus 16. You can see that every equation looks quite similar. They all have a set of brackets with two terms in it. They all have a number at the end that they either add or subtract and a number at the very beginning to the left of the set of brackets. We say that these equations are in the form y equals a x minus h squared plus k. So each equation is in the same form, they just have different numbers in place of k, different numbers in place of h, and different numbers in place of a. Now in this video we're not going to worry so much about the pronumeral a, but the pronumerals h and k are really important here. I want to focus on this equation here, so I'm going to get rid of the other two. You will notice that h equals 3, and that k equals 5. So what makes these two values so important? Well, if I was to draw the graph of this function here, the vertex where I've got the question mark is the point 3, 5, which we simply took from our h and k values. Whenever a quadratic function is in this form, the vertex will always be h, k. Or in the case of this function, it's going to be 3, 5. And there's actually a couple of different ways you can write the vertex down. I could write it as 3, 5, or I could write it as v, 3, 5. Sometimes we put the v out the front of the brackets just to point out that this specific point is the vertex. We can also find the axis of symmetry when equations have been written in this form. Looking at the vertex we have here, it's 3, 5, which means that this point lines up with the x value of 3 and the y value of 5. Now, if I was to draw the axis of symmetry, it would be a dotted line that passes through the x value of 3. We would say that the axis of symmetry has the equation x equals 3 because it passes through the x value of 3. We can see that this value of 3 is just the value in place of h. So the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals h. For this particular equation, h was 3, so we replace the h with 3. Now some of you may be wondering, how can this possibly work? How can these two numbers, 3 and 5, give me the vertex? To answer that question, I just need to make some space here. You may notice that the vertex is at the lowest point on the graph, meaning that the graph doesn't exist for y values lower than 5. When you look closely at the function here, you might notice that we cannot get values less than 5. Hence why the graph does not exist for values less than 5. The reason this function cannot have values less than 5 is because we're squaring something. And what happens when you square something? Whenever you square numbers, you always get an answer that is not negative. Even if I was to square a negative number, let's say negative 4, if we square it, we get positive 16. The smallest number you can get when you square something is 0. You can never get an answer less than 0 because you can't square a number and get a negative. So if we look at this part of the function, we can see that we're squaring something. So the smallest answer we can possibly get is 0. Now when you take 2, multiply it by 0 and add 5, you get a solution of 5, meaning that the smallest solution we can get 
for this function is 5, hence why the graph has a lowest point at y equals 5. So that explains why this part of the function, the plus 5, gives you the y value for your vertex. So that begs the question, why will my x value be 3? Well, if we look at the part of the function that we circled, we wanted to make this equal 0. And how do we make that equal 0? Well, we simply make x equal 3, because 3 minus 3 is 0. Hence why this 3 and this 5 will give us our vertex, because the vertex for this graph is the lowest point. Now the question is, will this work with a downward facing parabola? Let's take the downward facing parabola we can see here. We can see that this function is in the form y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Now in this case the a is negative 1 but that's irrelevant. We're looking at the h and the k. What will h equal? h will equal negative 2 because x minus negative 2 is the same as x plus 2. And our k will equal positive 1. We just write that k equals 1. Now when we take this h and k value, will this give us the vertex negative 2, comma, 1? Well the answer is yes, this is the vertex, so we'll label a v stating that this point is the vertex. So how can this work for downward facing parabolas as well? Because when you look at this parabola, the vertex is the highest point this time, not the lowest point. Well, once again, the reason behind this lies in the part of the function that we're squaring. When we square numbers, we can either get positive numbers or we can get a number equal to zero. We cannot get negatives. So when we're talking about the highest point on the graph, wouldn't we want a really large number? Don't large numbers give us the highest point? Let's say x was a large number, let's say 98. 98 plus 2 is 100, and when we square 100, we get 10,000. We get a really large number. If we're looking for the highest point, shouldn't we be looking for very large numbers? Well, not necessarily, because we actually have a negative symbol here. This is not 10,000, it's negative 10,000. And large negative numbers are well below the x-axis. So when we're trying to find the highest point, we're actually looking for a very small number. So when it's negative, it's not well below the x-axis. It doesn't matter whether the parabola is concave up or concave down. We always want this part of the equation, which we've circled, to equal zero. When you make this part of the equation equal zero, you will always find the vertex, which is why our h and k values can always be taken from these two numbers here. Now to finish off, I just want to show you what the axis of symmetry is for this function. It's always really easy, and the reason for that is because the axis of symmetry will always pass through the vertex, and it will always pass through the x value of the vertex which in this case is negative 2. So our axis of symmetry is just the equation x equals negative 2. Anyway, that concludes our video where we find the vertex and the axis of symmetry after completing the square. Remember to read the description below for links to workbooklets that relate to this video.